Okay. So Sunday was super fun. We had like 220 people with us. It was like 400 people registered. It's uploaded on YouTube as an unlisted video. So if you want that video, just send me a message and, uh, uh, and, and we'll get it over to you. Um, I'm really excited for this coming Sunday. I get to do a presentation on healing all of the damage that diabetes has done. That's, that one's going to be really heavy on the different types of medicine. Uh, but then I get to do a special presentation on Alzheimer's and dementia and aging. And that's going to be super fun. I've, I really can't wait for that. Um, but today, in between streams... You know, I wanted to dedicate as much time to be able to explain some of the things in smaller soundbite details for so that everybody can understand. Um, one that I wanted to focus on today is fatty liver. Everybody always asks about fatty liver. And I want to explain just a little bit about how it happens. Um, when your blood sugar is too high because of eating too much or being stressed out, causing uh, stress uh, um, elicits a pretty dramatic rise in blood sugar. So you, you're eating too much sugar, too stressed out, too much sugar in your blood. Uh, your pancreas makes insulin to bring those blood sugars down. Insulin is not does just go through your blood and gobble up all the sugar. What it does is it's a hormone that sends the sugar from your blood into your muscles. Mainly your muscles are the are, are like a giant gas tank, a giant reservoir that fills themselves up with sugar, it actually concentrates, concentrates the sugar in this lattice sort of structure of of condensed sugar that we'll call glycogen so that gets stored inside of your muscles and that's what gets burned so you utilize the sugar from the food that you're eating in your muscles your muscles are the primary way for your for you to control your blood sugar um when we're eating too much though high carbohydrate high calorie um sedentary not we're not using our muscles um we're relying on insulin to to keep the blood sugars but our gas tank is full the reservoir is full um we and and we are hyperinsulinemic insulinemic hyperinsulinemic anyways um too much insulin inside of your body your body will develop a resistance to insulin the first part that develops a resistance to insulin is your muscles they don't want to listen to insulin anymore because they're already full uh or you know well because of so many different things but they don't listen to insulin anymore they don't so your muscles stop don't let the sugar in so your body will respond to that by making more insulin to try to force the sugar in. Uh, but in turn, your muscles will will further become stronger in their resistance to insulin, not letting the sugar in. Sugar stays elevated. All of the extra sugar it needs to be put somewhere. So it's put in your kidneys, your blood vessels, your nerves, your eyes. And that's where it causes the damage that we'll talk about on Sunday. But it's really important to understand that insulin resistance is the is the primary driving factor for fatty liver if you have fatty liver it's because you have insulin resistance at the muscle um and all of that extra energy has to go somewhere and it goes there in the form of hepatic triglycerides the most concentrated form of energy that we could possibly store inside of our body a triglyceride uh, these start to accumulate inside of your liver and then we have fatty liver fatty liver uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease leads to nash non-alcoholic steatohepatitis in your liver that leads to cirrhosis of the liver and then a liver transplant in a couple of years fatty liver is going to be the leading cause of need the leading need for liver transplants. And it's really grim because the amount of liver that is available for a transplant is very limited because of fatty liver. <laughs> uh, and so anyways, I wanted to be able to share sort of this, this, this cascade of problems that starts at insulin resistance in the muscle. When we want to think about being healthy, when we want to be healthy and happy and live long and live well, um, insulin resistance is key to understanding uh, we need to be sensitive to insulin and so insulin resistance is what a lot of disease relies on so cardiovascular disease when you have diabetes your risk for cardiovascular incidents like a heart attack or stroke is through the roof um also um the vascular dementia, we're going to be talking about that on Sunday, about how, you know, vascular dementia is driven by 
metabolic disease or driven by insulin resistance and mainly ins insulin resistance in the muscle because what happens is when your when your muscles develop that insulin resistance they don't let the sugar in your sugar stays elevated starts destroying other parts of your body uh and and really um all of that extra energy is stored in the form of triglycerides in your liver and then the fatty liver uh what happens then your fatty liver uh your liver will start to develop a resistance to insulin because what's supposed to happen is that every time you eat your liver stops every time you eat you your there's food coming in so you have an insulin response and that insulin tells your liver stop throwing out a bunch of sugar because he's eating you don't need to store put send out a bunch of sugar anymore stop it for now um, then when the liver becomes resistant to that, your liver is still spewing out a bunch of sugar, even though you're eating it, then the pancreas can't keep up. There's no amount of insulin that it can make to keep up. So you start injecting insulin inside of your body, makes hyperinsulinemia even worse. Uh, you, you have to get put on medication at that point. Um, but also as the liver develops insulin resistance, when, as the liver starts to inoculate itself full of the, uh, full of fat, uh, this is what drives atherogenic dyslipidemia, the, the amount of uh, um, triglycerides in your blood, the amount of cholesterol in your blood, the LDL, the VLDL goes through the roof. And that's what drives cardiovascular disease. That's what drives insulin. Uh, that's what drives uh, your risk for heart attacks and strokes is driven mainly by a fatty liver so when your doctor says you have fatty liver, the chances of your blood lipid panel is just is just going to be very awful as well and you, and then your chances of cardiovascular disease are, are are tremendously high and the key to all of that the crux to which all of this relies on is insulin resistance in the muscle that's where it starts um and and, and at that point it's at any point it's, it's it's quite manageable all of the medicines that we talked about on sunday the labrador tea the chaga the blueberry leaves the combination of poplar bark and pine bark all of these medicines do the same thing that exercise does. <laughs> exercise has the same really dramatic impact on your blood lipids, on your fatty liver, on insulin resistance in the muscle. So it's super important for us to understand <laughs> we got to get moving. You have to be doing stuff. Sedentary lifestyle and having 400 grams of carbohydrates every day, which is the average. So it's like, such an incredible number between 350 to 400 grams of carbohydrates a day that's the average intake that's insane this is the first time humans have ever been engaging in that amount of food that amount of carbohydrates anyways uh and not doing anything having an office job streaming all day and <laughs> uh um Lifestyle is super important to consider. I love teaching about medicine, but we've got to get moving. Um, there's just no way around it. Um, anyways, uh, so I just, I, I hope that makes sense. I don't, <laughs> uh, just wanted to spend some time just to explain a few ideas as to wh where fatty liver comes from, what fatty liver causes, and how to help with fatty liver if you have it. One last gross little tidbit that I wanted to share with you is to understand that my war against Bannock, I will win. I will destroy vegetable oils because um, <clears throat> vegetable oils, polyunsaturated fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, um, mainly linoleic acid as linoleic acid is oxidized it turns to oxalams h and e h o d e these are all some some pretty toxic components that uh that i believe are um one of the primary drivers of insulin resistance in the muscle primary drivers of insulin resistance in the muscle which is fatty liver which is cardiovascular disease is uh vegetable oils <laughs> this is why we need to stop having vegetable oils they they desensitize your muscles to insulin they tell your muscles stop listening to insulin and uh and really kickstart this whole process um and so i just wanted to give vegetable oils a last little plug give you a little bit more encouragement and reason to 
put them in your chainsaws. <laughs> Uh, get rid of them as soon as possible because these are the diseases that they are driving. So, just wanted to spend a couple minutes. Uh, hopefully, I could make quite a few of these little videos. Um, want to thank all of our patrons, all of our supporters, all of the donors, all of the communities that are bringing me in to all support my opportunity to be able to share some of this information with with all of you so i'm really really thankful and i'm really thankful that you get to watch and i'm really thankful for all of the messages every time somebody shows me all of their vegetable oil in the trash it's beautiful so uh we'll see you guys as soon as possible <laughs> to me which